Okay, so I've ended my weekend of car fun. I wanted to uh, work on the car more over the weekend. So I mocked it up for multiplayer now. Multiplayer works. I made multiple changes to how it functions at a basic level. Uh, for one, steering wheel is no longer a dial component that you control. Now there's a lever so that you just grab it and it's far easier to control. Uh, for this, shoot, what's the wrong movement mode? There we go. For uh, the purposes of this, I've set it up so that the uh, what's going to eventually be the engine start button now controls the camera on the back so I can switch my views while I'm driving. I set it up so that there is a passenger seat now and I can easily add rear passengers as well to this setup. And I had people talking about last time now I did the standard engine implementation of I possess the car and the car gives me a new body and then I use that. People were like, oh, well, you know, we have to recode all of our gripping again. And, you know, what if I want to use all my items just like without any changes and it's going to be a lot of work. So, okay. I now have it so that um, your original player body is possessed into the car. And this took some source changes because of how pawns work in engine, you normally can't client side control a pawn, you know, instantly unless you possess it. So what I did uh, there it is, is I overrode the wheeled vehicle pawn in engine and added a way to fake possessing it so that this thing's and oh yeah, as far as this thing's concerned, my player controller possesses it and owns it. But I'm actually still possessing this body. So I can control remotely this car as if it was locally controlled by me without any problems but I can still retain my original pawn and this actually turned out easier than I thought it would I thought there'd be more barriers and more checks and balances in the engine against that and there were very few so it's a very small header file that I changed and added to the plugin to make a VR wheeled vehicle the fact that I had to do that means that eventually I might you know start baking more of the vehicle controlled paths into the plugin itself like um events back and forth between the car and the character and stuff like that so right now i just have that all working in blueprint where it's um you know car sends to the player hey you're being possessed into a vehicle uh, what do you want to do and then the character does a few things to manage with it so currently as this stands it does work in multiplayer it hasn't had perfect testing yet. I've only tested it a few times with other remote clients. It's mostly local machine two clients testing. But I have tested it across multiple machines and it does work. And um, I need some things if you were to like make a game with it. For instance, a new player joining the server wouldn't correctly set up the people inside the car, the passengers. If they're already inside it when they join, you'd have to do a rep notify and have the automatic setup on the rep notify if there's passengers in the sea, stuff like that. You also have to figure out what you want to do with inf things that are held when you go into the car. It currently just calls the teleport gripped items. So now you'll be in the car with whatever you have gripped. But, I mean, where are you going to put it? What are you going to do with it? That'd be up to... Uh, I hate the artifacts with MSAA and... Um, default world grid material. Alright, anyways. Oh, that's another thing. I also set it up so that when you put into the car, it auto-rotates you into your seat and assigns an area around your head where you're safe to be in. And if you go outside the area, it starts to darken your vision until you hit the maximum extent of it, and then it blocks out your vision entirely and just keeps you in position. So you can walk all the way across to your room and not be able to go past this point in the car. I need some tweaks. For instance, I need to be able to set the, um, I need to like, assign a button or something to re-zero your character into place so that you can like walk over to a ch chair, sit down and re-zero. Or, you know, five seconds after you've entirely left the boundaries, it'll re-zero and give you a warning, stuff like that. But I mean, that's easy to implement. And that's probably the last thing I'm going to go over. Um, I also probably need to make it so that Right now, I'm staying in the same position opposite here, and then it comes back. That means I can still walk across the room and be dark until I come back. I'd rather make it so that as soon as I start to pull back again, it's fine. But I'll go over the darkening stuff later. Something else I added to this pawn is normally 
to bind input to something, you possess it and then it binds input for it. I also added a way to add this as an input binder as well, so that when you possess into the pawn, keyboard, controller events, everything all work with it like normal. So, I mean, I could do trackpad stuff and the car receives those events first, and if they consume it, then the pawn that I'm main controlling never gets it, which is nice. Um, it also works with all passengers. The car can receive input locally for all passengers. So for like rezeroing the headset or controlling windows or something, you can use that for it. It works pretty well. Um, I guess there's nothing left to do except for take it for a spin. Huh? Let me go over to the passenger side. I'll show you that the passenger side does work. I'm in the passenger side seat now. I still have the vision darkening if I go outside of my boundary. But if I do any of these, it doesn't do anything because I'm not the driver. The car only responds to the driver. So let's view the car. Ooh, something went wrong. Sick. All right, so I found one bug. I'll have to fix that. It's just some weird default overlap thing. Okay, so let me get too close to my wall. Inside the car, outside the car. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. I'll get around to that when I can figure out what caused it. Anyways, on to driving the car. Get into the driver's seat. I can now control the speed of the vehicle from the driver's seat. Oh, when you get out of the car, it checks for a navigation mesh location that you can reach from within. I have little, oops, I have little components outside the car that define where you exit for each seat. And um, if it's blocked by like a wall, which is why this one's inside a little bit, it'll search a navigation mesh for the closest point that you can get to, which at this point I think would be up there. And then drops you out there instead of right here. So that's a little fail safe for it. Let's just back the car up a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to touch the wheel because I'm going to... Actually, I'm going to try the loop-de-loop. -loop. Okay, so I have engine start set to turn the camera on behind me. So now the camera controls it. And I can turn it off. And let's go. So the wheel is just with your hand motion. You turn it. And I'm, I can't make the loop-de-loop. -loop. The car doesn't go fast enough, but I have it up here. Yeah, and cars straight up. All right, it's got the default setting where if you go in reverse of your direction, then it breaks. This thing does not steer very well. It's a boat, but you know you can set up a car differently. It would work. But anyways, that's the basics of the car. I'm going to be uh, going over it more in the future, getting it even better. Um. This was my weekend project, and it worked out pretty well so far. Uh, there's my handle. Okay. So, mm, see you later.